uh, for football. It's only, this is all about the beautiful game, football. Well, here we talk to players before they become professionals. We talk to professionals, we talk to coaches, and we talk to fans of the game. Uh, we also cover hot topics and you know, present our views on football news. Part of where you are now is your parent. Um, you have a daughter that's a baller, and you've, you know, you've coached uh, both your daughter, her teams, and, you know, some other teams as well. So given that, how do you, you know, how do you address that challenge, right? Because it is something that's real in, you know, even in kids that are not playing at a competitive level yet, um, who may have some talent, but they're still this second guessing themselves. And even, you know, in particular, like focusing on your daughter, I don't know if, if you hit that barrier yet with her where you know there's things that she feel like she can't push through um, but if you have you know how do you address that yeah so uh yeah I think it's important you, you know coaching uh you know it's coaching gives you this amazing opportunity to 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 develop a player you know you know and uh I, I think that the biggest challenge that we as coaches have is, you know, we have to have the ability, ability to, to, to give them confidence, you know, because I know it's not, it's, it's, you know, coaching is, you know, it's the technical, you know, tactical skills and all of that, but a lot of, a lot of things is, is up here, you know, make sure that they believe in themselves, you know, and, and this coaching, me as a coach and a parent, you know, has given me this opportunity to to develop not just my daughter but the other players. And uh, but the biggest challenge is always because you know they tend to uh, to doubt themselves. You know, can I do it? Can I not do it? Oh, but I'm a left foot. Can I cannot kick with the right? So no, no, try with the right foot. You know, try with the right foot. And then one day you're gonna score with the right foot, and then you know you you made it happen. So I think. You know, at every age, that is the biggest challenge. You know, uh, the, the 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 confidence and make sure that they be, they believe in what they and they can do. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And so, we we your like your your daughter is still playing, right? Yeah. Yeah, she still plays. Uh. uh what? A, go on. No, yeah, she still plays. I still coach her team, but I also she also plays for for the uh, uh, Bethesda Soccer Club. Okay. Uh, and we, we I noticed that at one point uh, she needed somebody else, not just the dad. Yeah. And at one point, I think I did I did the basic, you know, and 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 now I I I I knew that I only had to be there just for the support and let somebody else do the job. Mm. Uh, and and she's doing well she's learning new things you know she's you know she's loving she's in love with the game you know uh she believes in herself you know and and now i'm like just watching from the sideline and she she wants to improve on something you know we'll work on that you know mm. i'm not just coaching her only coach you know so she has her own coach and and she has improved a lot yeah. uh, how do you handle watching it from the sideline recently how do you handle that uh as a coach or, or as a parent? As a it's basically like a supporter, right? Like letting her go how you started her from the from the foundation and now yeah. you're giving her to another person to take care of what you started. I, I how think, you handle that? You, know, you have that sense of pride because okay. you know, we started back when she was in second, third grade, and now she could juggle, you know, she juggles the ball and then you know she plays center back, center mid, and then you're watching her improve and 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 make a lot of you know improving all of the things that she couldn't she she thought she couldn't do you have that sense of sense of pride pride and uh it, it has been amazing amazing as, as a as a coach as a parent to see her grow yeah yeah do you ever um are there ever moments and part of the reason this question i'm asking this question is um the question is really like, you know, as a parent watching, how do you handle the need? And, and you used to be her previous coach, you know, I'm the primary. Coach. Like she's yeah. still playing for my team, 
you know. But when, I mean, when, when she, I'm saying when she's when she's playing on another team right now, right? Yeah. So how do you how are you handling the need to coach her in that moment, or even right after the game? <laughs> you know, like that, that. That was another big challenge yeah. that, that we all have. Like, if you're a parent, you're a coach. You know, the you we sometimes and I have been there. We don't have the ability to to separate the parent and the coach. You know, you're coaching from on the field. You're doing this. You know, you're yelling. You're doing passes. You know, you're doing good. You're encouraging them. But then sometimes we forget that we stop coaching and we're still coaching on the on the ride home. We're still coaching when we're having dinner. You know, <laughs> and and you know, and I I have been there. But you learn, and then she she also has to learn that uh, when we are practicing, I'm not the dad, I'm the coach, you know? So uh, as, a, as, a, as a parent, as a coach, yes, it, it, sometimes it, it's hard to, to, to stop coaching, you know, when you're riding, you're driving back home, you know, you know you, sometimes you, you still coach, still yeah. coach. So yeah, that is the, the biggest challenge I think that we have because at the end of the day, you know, you, it might be something small that you say, but it might be big for them. You know, it might, you know, you say, hey, you should have done this. And then now she, maybe she doesn't want to play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's really. Yeah, it's true. You know, yeah, so true. You know, it's, uh, it's, you have yeah. to know, you know, you know, when you, you, when you coach, when you want to be supportive, when you want to be the dad, you know, so it, that, it, that's important. And I think everyone, everyone that coaches and, you know, our parents, they go through that. And uh, yeah. sometimes, you know, uh, you, yeah, you, you, you don't know, you might be coaching the next star, you know, the next, but if you said the wrong thing or you didn't coach the right way, you know, she, now she hates soccer. Sure. <laughs> so, you know, it's, I think, I think that that's important to 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 able to to recognize that because you got parents on the sideline yelling, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, and I, you know, so you have to be able to know when to coach and say, you know, because at the end of the day, they're twelve, they're thirteen, they're still growing, you know. So. Yeah. So 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 I take it you're not one of the parents on the sideline going crazy, ah, like screaming at the kid. All no, that stuff. no, no, I'm not. When I'm when I'm when I'm just the parent just watching, yeah. you know, I honestly I have fun, you know. Yeah. I or even even if there the was you know the the end the result is not what we want, you know, or maybe her team is losing. I really, really enjoy watching my daughter play. You yeah. Know, she receives the ball. When she makes a good pass, that's good. You know, yeah. you have that sense of pride that that you know that's your daughter, that's your son, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. So, yeah, I think enjoy watching it. Yeah, part of the reason I'm asking is because I've I've been doing like a brief survey with parents that are that either you know play at an extremely high level or currently are coaches, you know, with kids and but they're not, you know, they've transitioned, they're either not co coaching their kid or whatever it is. And and they do have a different um take on the experience of the game uh in a way that you know because i'm constantly talking to parents about like you know how to interact with their kid like during the game like you don't need to scream or you know like some things can wait till the car ride home or you know like maybe you don't even discuss it today maybe tomorrow you know you can bring it up and say oh you know and you know not so negative or not overly positive like you know just all these little things and what I find is it's harder for parents who are not those things, like who, parents who didn't either play at a high level in the sport or are not coaches or whatever it is. And um, I think for the ones who are coaches or who played at a high level, they've had to like pretty much train themselves because you know they're coaching other kids. And so like over the over the years. They've learned that, okay, this might have, a, like you say, like may have a detrimental impact to this kid's development if I say it right now or if I scream from the sideline or whatever it is. Um, so let me hold my tongue and, you know, we can discuss this later or some things, you know, people know when they make mistakes, you know, everybody does. And so when somebody made a mistake, they know maybe just, you know, tap it a little bit. Don't like 
give him an uppercut, you know, like those kind of things. Like it, 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 happens. it happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have, you have parents or coaches, you know, that, you know, uh, <laughs> they do that. You know, when somebody makes a bad pass, you know, they, you know, I remember one day uh, my daughter was playing her, her club, you know, I was just watching, you know, and the other coach, you know, he was yelling at everybody, even our players. You know? and, <laughs> it's like, and I was like, what do you get from that? You know, it's yeah. like getting, you know, I bet that they're not even listening to you. You know, That's true. Uh, those are the best though. Like, I, I remember, this is, this is crazy. I remember coach, uh, so in my team that I coach, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it was like two years ago. So I have parents yelling, you know, hey, do they fun, you know, blah, 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 you know. And this girl turns to her dad and goes like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, because you know they don't they don't want that they don't want that you know they yeah. don't want to get embarrassed too yeah yeah they 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 need to have fun you know there's not they make they made a bad pass they made a bad pass you know yeah. I've seen a lot of players at eleven twelve that they quit playing because yeah you know they they just don't want to have that pressure from parents yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it, kids have come to me directly to talk to their parent. You know, like, Coach Mike, can you have a conversation with, like, you know, mom or dad or whatever? Um, and, you know, and I think from parents' standpoint, they, and, you know, I've had endless conversations with parents about this. And I think, you know, from what I've gathered, parents think what they're doing is, is actually good. It's like they're things like they're encouraging, they're providing guidance, you know, like it is it, is uh, they think it's supportive for their child to hear their voice while their child's, you know, playing the sport or trying to do something. Um, mm -hmm. And be because, you know, in the home, they're the ones providing the guidance and the support, et cetera. And, you know, what I try to tell them is like is. It's extremely disruptive, the, the amount of pressure. The kid is already dealing with a lot of pressure, right? In the game situation. And, you know, and we can talk about this, but actually, as you, as you involve as a player, you turn the tune out, everything, you know, er everything period, because, you know, like when you get older, you start playing and then the other fans are heckling you, et cetera. So like real ball is at that high level. You, you have to learn to tune things out. Mm -hmm. But when you're younger, you you can hear your mom or your dad's voice from a mile away because you have to, you know what I mean? Like they may be calling you to come in for dinner or whatever it is. And so like, you're really in tune with, with those voices. And so when mom is yelling something or dad is yelling something from the sideline, it completely like, like kick the ball. And you know, that's the favorite thing, right? It's like, kick the ball. Like, it's like well, why are you kicking the ball? Like, you know I mean? like run, jump, you know, this and that. Like, and so, you know, like I understand from a parent standpoint why they're doing it. You know, they're trying to be encouraging and provide some support, mm -hmm. but it's extremely disruptive. I mean, it's it's actually like you know, kids have break like mental breakdowns, oh, literally, yeah. and just just like you know, I, I don't feel like playing. I had, anymore. A, I had a few, not from our team, but from the others' team. Yeah, they stopped and started crying. Yeah, now now it's not fun for them anymore. You know, and yeah. and when I think back at my times, you know, I didn't have that pressure. And I have fun, and somehow I uh, develop the skills that now we're requiring our kids to have, you know, yeah. because I didn't have anyone yelling at me. Um, only my friends were yelling at me, but yeah. <laughs> you know, I have a dad or a mom, you know. So yeah. I, I, I want to add on to on that, right? For even for my own uh, experience, right? I can understand like how well, how the, the parents approach it because when I was coaching, the way I would approach it is like. Cause when I when I was playing, I always play on a high level. So with my mindset, right, the kids I was coaching, I think they they should be playing on that level. But when you kind of understand, you're not. It's not. This is not about you. It's about the kids that you actually. If you're a parent or if you're a coach, it's not about you. It's about the kid in front of you, right? Some of those kids, like like you're saying, it's a, it's a like Mike was saying, it's a it's a it's a lot of pressure already, right? Because not only that, they try to uh, impress the coach, the parents. They also try to impress their teammate. They also want to impress the guys that they're playing against. So it's a it's a whole huge uh, stuff in front of them, right? So sometimes when they, when the parents are talking like it, it feel like it's like a motivation for them. 
no, you can do it, you can do it. You think they've been mentally pushing them. But as I learned, that's not the case because we all are different. Because back then, how, how I used to approach it is like, oh, because it's James, it's the level, you know, this is how you're supposed to play. But I just feel like it's like, like it's ease in before those kids can get to that type of level. When Once you understand it, it's about them, not you, then you can, it's easy for you to approach. And another thing too, like I think true ballers, right, guys that play on the high level, have the experience. We know how to approach when, let's say we have a kid or we have coaches or you're coaching the kids, you know what it takes to get to that level. So when you see a kid making a mistake or when you see a kid trying or not even trying, you understand that it's a process. So you know how to deal with it easy instead of yelling at the kids when you're at the games and stuff because you understand it's a process. Yeah. 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 I, I, for me, the, the, the biggest, the thing that helped me coach uh, not just my daughter, but mm -hmm. all the kids. Is that one day somebody told me, you know, you have to coach from their perspective, from their point of view, you know, because you're coaching a 12 year old, 11 year old, you know, mm -hmm. and you're not coaching a 30 year old player, you know, so you have to see through, you know, put their shoes, you know, be in your shoes and, 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 and coach from there, from that perspective, you know, the, you know, it's no, you don't need to be yelling or, you know, and things mm -hmm. like that because you know and and this and you know that this uh when you yell or, or this you 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 only you lose they lose confidence and and all this will extend to their personal life you know you know it's not just about soccer but when they go to school you know they'll have less confidence they don't they, they don't think they have you know they worry about the, the game that they had last that the day before and and these things are important in their in their growth, you know. So I think that uh, it's it's important that coaches or parents that coach they 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 know this all of this. I I, I didn't know it. I learned it as as I as, as we went. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, yeah, it's important. Yeah, no, I mean, this, I think this is a a big piece in the development process. But you know, it's actually what what James just brought up the difference might be with like again going back to if you've played or if you have really been in that situation where you've seen the game at a high level you understand <clears throat> that it is a development process right so somebody at 12 13 14 15 you know they miss a pass or you know they're not uh putting pressure on defense or whatever it is those are like little pieces that can be worked. Like, this is not, this is not it. You know what I mean? Like their career is not done right yeah. now. You know, like they're not, you know, they haven't brought shame to the family. You know, that, <laughs> that's how, that, that's literally how like, you know, some parents take uh, it. But it's true though. It's, but true. it's because the parents do not understand the process. You, you see, yeah. like, so if they understood that this is a process and you know, this kid hasn't even hit puberty yet, or even if they hit puberty, they haven't refined their mortar skills yet, et cetera. So it's okay. You know, like that's really what it comes down to. It's okay. And then the other part of this where we're not even talking about is that, you know, for some people, some people do have the physical gifts that the physical gifts and the interest to pursue this at the highest level. Mm -hmm. But for the majority of folks, that is not their interest. That's true. And they don't have the gifts plus the interest to even, you know, be this great thing. And so this is, you know, they're enjoying the game. They're having a great experience. They're meeting, you know, making friends and meeting people and learning about leadership and team building and, you know, the, the, the works. Mm -hmm. But, but I think, I think this is one of the things that, you know, I'm, I'm always cognizant of is that like, and, you know, I always tell my son, like, the generally, like, the way to think of life and even in the team situation is that people are going in different directions, right? People have different destinations. So even on a team, you may have four players that want to go pro. Then you may have two that want to play in college. Then you may have three that want to play in high school. That's the, like their dream is to play high school. Then you may have, like, the rest. That just they're just having fun, you know. What I mean? Like like it's just a they just they just here to meet their friends and hang out and you know yeah they get but it's not that and so I think that's like here, that's what makes it really difficult because you know like where we're from, 
you know, where all of us are from, those groups wouldn't necessarily play together in a, a formal team, right? So the, like your friends that just, the guys that just play, you know, on the, the road, Mm-hmm. They'll just keep playing on the road, you know. They'll just keep playing the road. The guys that want to play with the pro team, like you know, you and that—that's a different group, you know. Like that group, like the focus, the, the things you have to take into consideration is a completely different group. And so, I think that's one of the big issues here as well, which is that there's the mixtures, right? So you have, you know, on a, a team of fifteen or twenty players, you're gonna have all of those elements. Like it's rare that you have a team of just people who just want to have fun. Right. Mm-hmm. Or a team of just everybody wants to go pro or a team of, you know, like it's, it's really rare. Like in every I mean, every now and then you have like, you know, people pretty much like you have parents that are going around like if they got the, the guys that want to go pro, they're going around looking for like, you know, to form like a super team, you yeah. know, and just have all those guys together. And that rarely works because the dynamics is not, you know, it's not a natural forming uh, forming dynamic especially at the low, at the youth, youth level. Um, and so they, they may win games and stuff, but it doesn't push the kind of development that the parent has in mind because it's not a, you know, the, the environment doesn't really support it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's, that's, you know, that's a big issue here, but I mean, I don't know how we, we really handle that. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you, I mean, we already talked about, you know, you being a, um, a parent slash coach. Mm-hmm. What I want to ask is, what do you want? You know, your, your daughter's still playing. You're still coaching her team and, you know, she's playing on another team. What do you want to be your lasting legacy to the game? Uh like for my kids or? that could be i mean that could be it like for you know it could be like you want your daughter to continue the love for the game yeah you know i i think that's that's something that that i would want and and she she really loves the game she she if you know i went to in fact when i came home today she was watching usa canada uh so <laughs> i think you know she was a little sad after the game <laughs> <laughs> uh, we sat yes uh, two days ago we sat and we watched brazil versus ecuador you know mm-hmm. so and i think for me that that is like you know uh, you know the what i want to leave you know just love for the game love for the sport sports you know to me when i you know i grew up in a different country different things you know so to me it's playing soccer was like I always tell people it was like a big brother to me, you know, it kept me focused on wanting to play and nothing more and none of the stuff that, you know, end careers and, you know, had, you know, you got people doing this and that, you know, but me wanting to play, 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 it kept me focused on just that. And, you know, I think that's what I want to, I want, I guess, a legacy for my kids to yeah. focus on, this, you know, yeah. Yeah. Does she, does she have, or have you guys have any discussions about like her future goals in the game? Uh, we have, we have things that she want to do, you know, but uh, I, I, I don't want to, you know, put pressure, you know, Yeah. Mm-hmm. just have fun, you know, work towards your next goal, you know, like mm-hmm. start season in a month. We, we talked to her coach like two days ago. She set up goals for her. You know, you have to have this, you know, and work on that. You know, maybe next year we, you want to do high school tryouts, maybe this and that, try work on that. And then we'll see where we go. But, you know, I think that if we, if we set expectations or goals, like, you know, we got to hit the pro level or, or this and that, you know, I think, this is my opinion. I think, you know, we put in too much pressure, you know, yeah. want to have, have, have want, want her to have fun, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, what question I thought Michael was going to ask if, if uh, she or uh, you guys have decided what's her favorite uh, club. I thought that you, that's what you were about to ask. What's her favorite club? Oh, that's and what you want, you were asking? No, no, I thought that's, no, what, no, 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 no. that's what I'm asking now. Oh. So what, what, yeah, what's her favorite club? She likes, you know, there's a Netflix, there was a Netflix, uh, show from uh 
uh, Guardiola, all or nothing from. Oh, she saw that. <laughs> that Manchester City. Yeah. What? <laughs> that. See, this is okay. We, this is what we have to talk about. Yeah. The power of media, Christian. It's okay. Here's the thing, right? So you, I mean, you know, like, and you, you've seen Michael, you know, since he was a kid as well, right? He's been a. He, I mean, he plays with us at pickups and all this stuff. Okay. This guy. And, you know, like, and I've been pushing Chelsea or Madrid, you know, a little Barnes, like, you know, all these other clubs, right? That, it, we watched that, uh, that special. Yeah. Everybody else moved to the side. It's Mad City for life. I'm like, <laughs> what is going like, the, the, like, the power, of, and I, I try to tell, like, people don't understand. Yeah. This thing is really powerful. Yeah. That, that the amount of that's the third City person I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of Man City fans that was created through that special. Yeah. Yeah. Is is crazy. It's all young people too. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You fed this young. It's crazy. You know, you, you know. You say you try Chelsea and all of that. I also, you know, when we went, you know, we had a couple of family trips, and mm -hmm. you know, when we go to home, when we go home to Ecuador, I'm always going to include a trip to the stadium. My yeah. team. Not my yeah. wife, my team. Yeah. We, you know, I buy jerseys for everyone and we watch the game. And I, yeah. see, I tell my daughter, my son, look, you know, this is, look at this nice stadium, look at the nice grass. <laughs> you know, try to, okay, you know, and then two years later, say, what's your favorite team? <laughs> my wife's team. Uh, you know, so yeah, I, they never choose, you know. <laughs> yeah. And oh, man. After, after they watch the, um, the uh, all or nothing is all Manchester United, Manchester City here. You know, yeah. she knows all the players. You know, she knows the coach. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I mean, it's that I'm telling you. Like, I've talked to like five families, and it's the same thing. You know, like I'll see the kid with the bad city. Oh, you're into you know, because I would think there's something there, like from a parent. You know, no, nope. we watched the special. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? It's just some other teams, I think. No. Yeah, no, they yeah, they've done it. Like, you know, but that was the first one. Yeah. Right. So, you know, so there's the Juve one. I mean, we've seen you know the Dortmund one. Yeah. Just, there's, just there's a, you know, yeah, but it was the first. It was the first one. You know, and it really, you know, it, and it was fun as well. Like the, the, you know, another all or nothing that I encourage a lot of people to see is the Brazil. The, the Brazil one, um, and you you know you just see like it's the team atmosphere like it's is like the that the the Man City one was mm -hmm. that was really what drove it yeah it was like a lot of the other ones they were trying to create like you know some drama like the Juve one for instance Bernardo came you know that it was that time and those kind of things but with the Man City one it was just like the team you know just that team the locker room environment and that kind of stuff that's what I always say like. Right now, I don't know if they are shooting, but they should be shooting one for PSG. No, they're shooting for Chelsea. I heard it's really dope. Oh, I'm sure. But <laughs> I'm just oh, okay. But no, no, but but they should if like if I was PSG, That's I true. would be shooting PSGs right now yeah. because they're having a blast, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, it's like I've always like, you know, I've seen some of like the behind the scene, like these guys. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, I always say, like if they really want to take it to the next level, they should just bring Pogba on, and it'll just be like a party, like literally, like it'll just be like straight. They'll just be dancing, like the, just constantly. All those guys, you know, because most of them are friends, like yeah. real, real friends outside of the game, you know, like on in, during summer they all hanging out and those kind of things. And so, yeah, I mean, so the PSG and that would just drive kids crazy. Like everybody would be a PSG fan, and like, it would just be yeah. like you got, you got Messi. Name you got Mbappe, oh, you got Neymar, yeah. like it's literally all the top three tens in the world all on the same team. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean they need to shoot it. Like I, I don't know what they they probably already they were, it's already done. No, yeah, they, yeah, they know what they're doing. Yeah, they're playing games, man. <laughs> yeah, man, Christian, it's been a blast. Um, what well, actually, you know, we didn't you didn't say anything about so the team you're currently coaching. Mm -hmm. uh tell us a little bit about the team and if folks want to um you know get in touch and try out etc it's a, it's a girls team u14 um we started 
about six years. We started as, as a rec team. Uh, and then um, after two years, we decided to move up a level. Uh, MSI calls it MS, uh, classic level. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a great group of players. You know, they have been playing together since second, third grade. So they're really, really the chemistry that we have. It's amazing. You know, they get along on the field, off the field, you know, so it's a great, great uh, environment that they have uh, growing. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, we played it. We played. Di- we have different tournaments throughout the year. You know, uh, mm-hmm. March and May, and uh, it, it's amazing. It's 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 amazing what, what what we have done. You know, we came. You know, so a lot of these players never played before, and now you know, see them when you watch them play. You know, it, it's a great experience that we've had as coaches. Uh, team is called Silver Springs Parks. We have a Facebook page uh, we, and we have, we were doing well. We, we are doing very well. Uh, we have been able to retain, uh, I would say 80% of our players, you know, uh, you know, we have kept the same, uh, the same players, you know, some players have left because they move out of town, you know, things like that. We have, we have kept most of our players. Nice, nice. Great. I mean, that kind of touch on what you were talking about, the USA playing as a unit, you know, the importance of building that chemistry. Um, yeah. no, it's, 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 it is very important. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. So if, if, um, if folks are interested, they would go to Facebook uh, and look for Silver Spring Sparks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Silver Spring Spark. That, that's what we, uh, we, we have the different posts, you know, do we games practices uh yeah our season starts in about a month so we're looking forward to that nice nice yeah. cool cool any any last words anything you want to let the folks know if they want to get in touch with you to get some of that um uh, ecuadorian magic no orange orange yeah, yeah. <laughs> ecuadorian oranges oh man christian used to bring some good oranges <laughs> Yeah. Cap City, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, every, time, every time I had a, you know, we had practice or a game, you know, my wife would be like, don't forget the oranges. Because <laughs> when, when you go back home, you come with a whole boatload of them, right? <laughs> those oranges. Bro. So your wife's trying to get them out of the house. She's like, those take, take, take those oranges, man. <laughs> oh, get them out of here. Yeah. Man, man, man. Oh man, but yeah, man, anything you want to leave the folks with? You know, just, um, you know, we have the Facebook page. Uh, if you, anybody wants to reach us, we, you know, we, we, we welcome everybody. We, every, you know, every level, you know, want to practice with us, you want to play with us, you know. Uh, I believe that, uh, you know, today we don't have a lot of uh, enough uh, playing time, pickup games, you know, where not everyone is included. That's why <clears throat> when you have that uh, pickup games, I think for DC 11, I think it's, a, it's, it's great what you're doing, you know, you, you including everybody, you know, you don't have to pay a thousand dollars to have one clinic, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, and that's what we're doing, you know, you know, in, anybody wants to play, practice with us, you know, it's a really nice uh, environment for, for the girls. Nice, nice. Yes, yes, yes. Silver Spring Sparks. Um, Christian, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for, you know, all the work you've done, especially, you know, with the girl, the Silver Spring Sparks, those girls' teams. I know you've been coaching them for years. <laughs> I, I remember I used to be, I used to do reconnaissance for you to tell you the field was available. Uh, um, uh, what was that, Sligo? Yeah, remember <laughs> to be like, oh, yeah, Christian, you can come because I mean that's a whole other story, but anyway, but yeah, <laughs> so yeah, for all the work you put in, man, um, you know, thanks. I'm sure I'm, I'm saying thanks uh, for those girls, parents, um, for the you know the general football community for all your playing with Cap City, mm-hmm. and you know with Ro- Roosevelt, you, you guys winning that championship from Wilson. I'm sure that's gonna be. Oh a- yeah, yeah. That's gonna be a big one in the DC community. They're gonna talk about that a little. Yeah. Um, 2001, if I'm not. Oh, was Pierre on that team? 
Uh, what, what he went to? Wilson. Well, he went to Wilson. Yeah, right? yeah, have to be on that team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you. Yeah, will. have to be on that team. They, yeah. they have a, a mirror on that team. Yeah, it was a power. <laughs> Even Alex might be on that team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex I think so. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the RFK, the fields right outside the RFK, RFK the mm -hmm. RFK, you know, there's fields outside the stadium. That's yeah. what we made our final. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Nice. He's so wow, wow. Yeah, man. If, wow. If, if, you, if you have some pictures or footage of that, that would be good. We could we could splice that into, you know, into this episode. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah's so uh, for that pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be, that'd be dope. Yeah, yeah, man, it's been a pleasure. Everything, man. It's great always playing with you. Like I said once again, thanks for that oranges, man. Thank you and your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Those oranges, man. I can't forget it. <laughs> thank you, Christian. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, have uh, one or two sessions with you guys. You know, I really miss playing. Uh, yeah. you know, I'm still recovering. You know, I was telling Mike that I had surgery about a month ago. Okay. So you know, recovering, but I'm hoping to be on, on, on the field soon. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we're going to have a few, uh, you know, old heads uh, pickup session in early summer, late spring, late spring. Um, yeah, everybody, everybody's going to come through. It's going to be good times. All right. Yeah. All right, man. It's been a blast. Mm -hmm. Good seeing you, Good night. Likewise, likewise. Have a good one. All right. Bye.